it's a really great pleasure to have everybody here in person, you know, again. So we had some really, really um, enjoyable meetings about three, four years ago, and then sadly had stopped during the pandemic, but it's really good to have everybody here again. Um, and we're being joined by a lot of people online, um, well over 100, although we're not up to there yet, I don't think, are we? But um, hopefully, the, you know, people will join as we go along. Um, so we've got an exciting programme. We're going to record the programmes. So as, as last year, we'll, we'll be able to put it all up on the website. So if you want to go back and look at any talks and things, you can, you can do that later. Um, so what I'm going to start off with is just a little bit of an introduction to what Cadisil is. This is very similar to what we discussed last year. But just to bring people, you know, so everybody understands what we're talking about, because you know, people um, come to this meeting with different experiences and different amounts of knowledge and so on. So we'll just talk a little bit about what it is. And then I'm going to do a, a, give you a sort of general overview of some of the research in the area before we move on to more specific things. So, um, so genetics is very important in stroke and we're discovering how important it is. But the way you can look at this convention is you can divide it up into diseases, which we call monogenic, which is where you've got one gene that causes the stroke and polygenic, which is where you've got lots of genes that all have small effects and cause a stroke. And Cadisil is, is a monogenic disease because one, an abnormality in one gene, it's not three gene, results in, in stroke. Um, we also do a lot of, lot of research on um, sort of polygenic influences for stroke. And, you know, we've made real progress in this area. Now we've discovered 50 or 60 genes that all increase the risk of general stroke in the population as well, but that's for a different day. So cadicil is by far the most common monogenic form of stroke, but we may have some people who have different um, similar diseases. So the next most common one is called cadicil 2 or HTRA1. So we may have people, we look after people with that disease in the clinic too, and that, that presents in a very similar way to cadicil. It's just caused by a different gene. So what is Cadacil? So Cadacil is um, something that's called autosomal dominant, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And it's due to an abnormality in a gene called Notch3. And it results in abnormal function of the small blood vessels in the brain. Um, it's strange because it causes changes in the blood vessels throughout the body. So that's what we used to do, a skin biopsies to diagnose it. We don't do it so much now, it's got better genetics but it actually only causes symptoms in the brain. Um, and it results in a characteristic constellation of symptoms. Um, so here is his DNA, and you'll be aware the structure of this was discovered in Cambridge about three miles away, um, just down the road um, by Watson and Crick. And so in, in the, you have two, two strands and you have different um, base pairs connecting the two strands you can see here. And Cadicil results from a mutation in just one of these little base pairs. And this results, as we'll come on to, in a change in the protein and the disease. So it's a very minor abnormality, but it does have, have major consequences. So if we talk about monogenic disease, you can have two types of inheritance. And I said to you, Cadicil is dominant. And you can also have a, a recessive type of inheritance. Now, if it's dominant, it means that... Um, half of your DNA comes from your dad and half of your DNA comes from your mom. It means that you only need one copy of the gene to get the disease. So that means that if one of your parents is affected, you can catch the disease. If it's recessive, you need to get a copy from both of your parents to get the disease. So for example, here, this is, this is um, what happens if say dad's got cadicil, dad's got two copies of his DNA. One of them has got the gene X, one of them doesn't tick. Mum doesn't have She's got two copies and both of them don't have the abnormal cadicil gene. So you can see if you, if you calculate, um, work out randomly 50-50 that each of these goes to the ch children, you'll see the half of the children will have the condition and half won't have the condition. So autosomal dominant means essentially that the children have got a 50% chance of receiving the gene. But of course it's all random. So you can have three children and none of them may have be passed on the gene or you can have three children and all of them may be passed on the gene. And the abnormality you get in Cadicil, um, for some reason, which we don't fully understand, affects these very small blood vessels in the brain. So this is a, this is a brain which I've cut sort of like this, this way. Um, so here, 
is the right and left, here's the top, here's the bottom. Um, and here's a big blood vessels. Here's a big blood vessel we call the middle cerebral artery, which goes to most of the most of the um, brain, and causes a very big stroke. So we sometimes see people not in very different from cardiac, but we can see people. And these are, these little blood vessels that come off. We call small blood vessels or perforating blood vessels. And these are the ones that are affected in cardiac. And you, you're probably aware that you know this produces very characteristic appearances on MRI. So. Um, MRI is really what usually diagnoses the disease in people. And, and the two most common things you get are little tiny strokes. They tend to be quite small because these blood vessels are quite small. So if the blood flow is disrupted in one of these blood vessels, you get a small stroke. So you can see a small stroke here. And they also, just because you've got chronic changes and because the flow in the blood vessels isn't quite normal, you also get more chronic what I would always just call a scarring really in the brain. And that's what you can see on this scan here. These white areas, uh, the black areas are completely normal. That's just fluid in your brain, the black areas in the middle, but these white areas and these white matter intensities. So those are the changes we see on MRI. And the symptoms that you get in Cadacil are migraine. So this is a commonest symptom. It's about, you know, 70% of people get migraine, not everybody. And cadastral migraine is a bit different from normal migraine because it usually, as you know, occurs with an aura. So you'll get sort of visual disturbance or you'll get numbness or you'll get, you know, um, speech disturbance or sometimes confusion. Whereas usually in the general population, most, most migraine doesn't occur with aura, only 10% does. And then strokes, these little, little strokes that I just showed you. And then as people get older, you can get memory problems and dementia. Um, and one thing that can occur and seems to be more common than one would expect just by chance is depression in cadastral. And of course, this is partly because you know, if you've got a disease, it's, it's a big stress. But there also seems to be some way in which the, the, the damage to the brain makes you more predisposed to get depression if you've got cadastral. And then less common things that you can get in cadastral are this sort of cadastral coma, which is, is a very strange presentation where people sort of get a migraine attack and then they get rather confused and sometimes become comatose and everybody worries a lot and they go to hospital. And often people think it's an encephalitis or infection of the brain, but it gets better on its own. Um, and that's an important thing actually to, to realize because it does get better on its own. And sometimes people get very sort of concerned medically about it. And then sometimes you can get seizures, although they're not very common. So, so that's a sort of introduction to, to Cadacil. As you know, we run a national referral clinic for Cadacil and we see patients from throughout the UK. We've seen now actually over 500 patients. Um, and we're always happy to see people. Um, and, but referral has to really, if we, if we get patients, we, we need the information about them. So they have to be referred um, by the GP or by the local neurologist or by a geneticist. So um, th that's a referral pattern and um, they can be referred to the addresses on our website. And then we tend to see people in person the first time, just because it's important we can look at people and examine them and everything. But after that, we increasingly, or we have been for many years, following people up um, by telemedicine. This was actually, we were very lucky that way before the pandemic, we got money from a local charity called Leaf and Trust to set up um, the telemedicine service. And you may remember, some of you may remember Jessica Walsh, who helped set this up. Um, and this has worked really well, actually. And we did a big study, which many of you took part in, to sort of look at people's views on telemedicine. And it, the, the views were really very positive. And it was the, um, the feeling was that you got almost as good a consultation as if you came in person. So we now run this by Zoom. We used to run it by Skype. And we do many, many of our follow-ups by telemedicine. Um, this is our website for those of you who aren't aware of it. So if you, you, know, if you want to find information about Cadisol, this is a good way to find information about it. Um, and you can see all the, all the things here. So for example, um, or about the clinic, about diagnosis. This is some stuff that Alex, um, Alex has helped us with, research, previous meetings and videos. You can hear, you can hear Glenn talk here if you get to videos, a very impressive video here, um, and various other things. Um, and you can also download this leaflet, which we've produced. Um, and I just lastly, to say thank you to Cadisil Support UK. This is a slightly old slide, but um, this has made a really big difference, Cadisil Support UK, I think having an organisation which where people can speak to other people who've experienced the same, you know, questions and things that they've they've um, received. And this is something that Glenn set up with Karen who can't be here today and jobs some time ago. 
um, and this is primarily on Facebook, but Glenn can ask answer more questions about this. And you know, I think this is this is is a it's worked out really well, and I'm very impressed with what they've done. Um, and so this meeting is, you know, we've joined together with them to present this meeting. So um, that sort of gives you an introduction to Cadasil.